Hello, this is Rueda Al Hamad, and I'm a lecturer in civil engineering at Aberta University. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about the creative construction challenge, and it's called Build Me a Bridge. Um, so I'm giving you this uh, simple presentation on the challenge and bridges uh, and wh why we need bridges. So uh, first, a simple question, why would we uh, need to build the bridges? Um, basically, we need to um, cross uh, over to the other side of rivers, and that's why we will build the bridges uh, for crossing over and uh, connecting lands. Um, and that's the main purpose of a bridge. Um, so how the bridges will stand up in terms of physics? Um, so uh, there's two types of forces um, generally in physics that would hold our bridge to, together. The first force is uh, called compression force, and that's a uh, a pushing or squeezing. So if you imagine you you kind of like having something in between your hand and push it like this, it will hold. Um, and even if you have, let's say, three Lego pieces and you'll uh, hold the one in the middle, pushing in, uh, pushing that, uh, it would hold together. The other force is uh, tension. And is that basically pulling or a stretch force? So if you imagine your hands uh, and my hand doing like that, that will ap apply a tension force. And that tension force will uh, um, like uh, act like a connection in between my hand. Uh, and since the man, my hands are not letting go of each other, I have a mean and a strong surface to um, carry on load. So if you have something on the top, uh, you'll be able to carry a, a certain amount of, of weight in there. So mainly the forces will transfer in a bridge by compression or tension forces. Um, and that's a, a simple picture of hands. So types of bridges, there is like a lot of type of bridges and it's all acting on uh, using different um, methods of uh, load distribution. Um, and one of these uh, bridges uh, is called arch bridge. And as you see in the picture in the top, the forces are acting um, this like this way to hold the two part of the bridge together, it's kind of gluing the bridge together. Um, and that's a real life example of bridge from Manchester. Um, the other type of bridge is called a uh, cable style bridge. And in, in this bridge, you'll have uh, piers, towers, um, cables and de de decking, and it would lock. So that's the towers. That's our cables. These cables need to hold something, which is the deck of the bridge. Um, and that would be uh, how that kind of the mechanism of load transferring. So the load will be uh, moving in here. And then these cable will take the load to the tower. And then the tower will give it to the pier, which it will transfer that to the foundation of the bridge. And uh, the Queen's Ferry Crossing is uh, one example uh, for cable style uh, bridges. The other type of bridges refer to a suspension bridge, and it's kind of similar to the cable uh, state bridges. And we'll see 
shall have your abutment that would hold the bridge. We'll have the towers, piers, cables, and the, however, this time is a suspender cables, not the same cables we've seen in the first uh, type of bridge, and this will hold the deck. Uh, and these like small, so you can see the main difference on how the cables are connected uh, to a main cable or a suspender cable, and that cable will hold the load. So they are not transferring the load directly. In this case, they are not transferring the load directly to the tower. They are transferring the load to your um, uh, suspender cables and the suspender cable uh, would transfer the load to the tower. And as an example, um, is the fourth road bridge in here and the Golden Gate Bridge is one of the most famous uh, uh, suspension bridges in the world is in San Francisco, unfortunately in a day I was there, it was kind of foggy, but you can still like see the huge span uh, in between um, the two uh, piers. Another type of uh, bridges called uh, the thrust bridge, and it would be at the, this like this yellow bit is the thrust, which is basically a mixture of members that would uh, hold only tension compression depending on where they are. Um, and this is a real life uh, simple truss bridge. You can see these like steel members that will carry and distribute the load. A bit fancier type of bridge called a cantilever bridge. And in this case, um, you'll have this bit of the bridge fixed this bit of the bridge fixed and this bit in the middle hanging in between the two fixed bridges and that's why it's called cantilever bridge. Um, the fourth rail bridge is one of the most famous example for this one uh, and it's in Edinburgh. So uh, girder bridges are like very common and in this case you'll have a pier, pier, and the decking all, all, all over it. Um, you may have seen that uh, if you ever visited Dundee, because you need to cross over uh, by train, you need to cross over the uh, Terrell Bridge. And if you came to Dundee through or out of Dundee um, through the road, it would be the Tay Road Bridge. And they both uh, kind of uh, some like examples for girder bridges. So kind of modification to normal girder bridges is the movable bridge. Um, as you can see, that bridge will be a normal girder bridge. However, it could open the middle bit to allow um, ships uh, to pass underneath. And one very famous example is the Tower Bridge in London for uh, the movable bridge. So in the coming slide, some example from uh, local bridges. You would probably have seen those. Have a think if you saw them. Uh, they're all around uh, Dundee, Scotland area. Um, so you can notice all of these are arch bridges. And this one is a uh, very, very old. And um, this is the more like uh, girder bridges. Can you tell me what is this one? You, if you've been to Dundee, you must have seen this one as well. So I'll ask you a question why we need creative civil engineers. Um, sometimes you'll have, we'll have challenges uh, that uh, you'll need to design a bridge in a very difficult uh, uh, place or 
uh, we have uh, a, a unique situation which we need to be to come with a creative solution. So not everything is as simple as building a bridge in between two points. You'll have a challenges in between how to set your peers with the soil, hold the load, how the load is designed, what material to use, what is the cost of this material? And you'll have all these sort of questions in your head when you're designing your bridge. So, so that's why you need to be creative and innovative to provide a solution. Um, which brings me to today's challenge. So I'm asking you to build me a bridge and basically we're aiming to, to give you an understanding of uh, the built environment and uh, infrastructure, 3D modeling of your structure, and also we're raising awareness of the environmental impact we're leaving because we're leaving a huge environmental impact and that's why the main material I'll ask you to use is a recyclable material and civil engineering as a whole is more moving towards sustainable building which meaning we're trying a well, simple definition for sustainability is sustaining the resources so the next generations of people coming to the earth have something to use and we're not consuming all the resources. So what is uh, our challenge? Uh, I'm asking you to build me a bridge with a span of uh, 75 uh, centimeter and in, in long. Uh, so the bridge need to support about uh, uh, 250 grams, which is kind of a tin can. And um, so, and you need to use uh, only recyclable material, which I'll show, show you some example of material you can use. So paper, newspaper, cardboard, tin cans, uh, plastic bottles, or like could be used as a recyclable material when you build your bridge. Um, so this did this slide, there's a pile of stuff uh, you might want to use uh, in building your bridge. And uh, I'll have very, very simple example of my bridges. First, my very, very simple, um, co I call it the cork bridge. So the cork bridge, probably will be the main thing that we started as a human uh, to build the bridges. It would be just a, a board of timber or whatever they had. They faced that on the river crossed over. And you can, um, a simple cork bridge can hold the weight of uh, one tomato, 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 so whatever, which, which one you would prefer. So that's a simple bridge with a cardboard could hold the weight of the tomato tomato. And a fancier one where I used in this, uh, the egg box, uh, the, the 12 uh, one, the dozen one. Um, and you'll have these like recyclable uh, from uh, toilet paper rolls. Um, and it would uh, look like that, going a bit fancy with uh, something that would distribute the load more evenly. And you can see this one is more comfortable holding the weight. And it's held even more weight. And surprisingly, it even could hold um, a weight of a can with a couple of uh, tomatoes. So a more fancier, like a taller bridge. In this case, um, you can see uh, it couldn't hold up standing. That's why I had uh, to put uh, a bracing in here just to get it to hold together. And these are all made from recyclable materials. Um, again, so it barely could hold the weight of one tomato in this case. And now I added more bracing, which could um, hold two tomatoes now. Um, so basically, these like simple examples. Uh, however, in your example, I set what is the long, uh, what the length of your bridge to be um, 
50, uh, uh, 75 uh, mil, uh, centimeter, which is basically will be the length of your river in, in real life. Um, and the weight, which is basically the expected weight. So are you using uh, that bridge for railway? Are you using that bridge for trucks? Are you using that bridge for simple transportation? And um, that's why I had the assumption of the weight that the bridge can hold uh, to be um, 250 grams. Okay, well, thank you for listening and good luck designing uh, your bridge.